Hello there, Rocketeers! Welcome back to Space Flight Simulator. Now, if you watched last video, um, you know that I accidentally made an oopsie with my Saturn V rocket. So, this is going to be the full version with an actual successful moon landing. So, it's probably going to be more silent, but if you did not see last video, um, basically this is just to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Apollo. And, uh, so, last video, if you didn't watch, my lander was not attached to my rocket, so it, for some reason, disappeared when I, um, launched, but this time, I attached it to the third stage of the rocket, so everything should be good, and I should have a successful mission. Now I'm going to get a apoapsis of 150 kilometers just because so I'm getting ready to separate the stage. I know I still had fuel left in but just so that um, I always end up having extra fuel on this. And I'd rather run out of fuel on my third stage. I'm not sure why, it just seems better. So yes, this is actually the largest um, rocket that you can build, almost, as far as altitude goes. And it's a pretty cool rocket. Um, I'm going to start uh, rolling my rocket a little bit so that uh, I don't have to worry about uh, getting into orbit as much. It's a bit easier. So just 50 kilometers more to go. And then I'll start circularizing my orbit. Twenty two kilometers. And that's good. I'm still gonna use the fuel in this stage just because. I don't need to, but I will. While this is burning off, I'm just going to go ahead and set the moon as the target. Now I'm going to separate and continue the burn. Now if you do enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe and if you're new to the Space Flight Simulator game, I have a bunch of tutorials on how to get to orbit and how to get to the moon, and some docking tutorials as well. So I'm going to time warp up to my apoapsis. And burn. And then I will, once I get into a perfectly circular orbit, or as close as possible, I will separate the um, third stage and maneuver my uh, vehicle into position. I always, other than space stations, aim for a higher orbit just because um, one, you're out of the way of your other stations and stuff like that. Two, um, you have plenty of room to adjust or send up refuel missions if you make any mistakes. So we're going to circularize. And then... 
I'm just going to burn retrograde once I reach this um, periapsis. There we go. It's getting close. I'll try and bring it, bring it in as close as possible. So if you don't know what I'm referring to when I say apoapsis and periapsis, the apoapsis is the highest point in an orbit, and the periapsis is the lowest point in an orbit. There we go. Now I will simply just warp to here, do a short burn with the third stage. Then I will perform the third stage separation. Once that reaches about 1,000 kilometers or when I run out of fuel. So in this game, if you have extra fuel um, and you're trying to do uh, where you have just enough fuel, just raise your orbit a couple of times. I'm going to separate the third stage, and then I'm going to rotate this. I don't need to use RCS, but it just um, sounds a little cooler. As, and I know I just ran into the rocket, but no damage, so it's all good. Separate off. I really wish that in this game uh, you could uh, kind of make it where um, you see how the engines here aren't hidden in the uh, um, fuel tank behind it. I wish that there was a piece that was kind of hollow and it wasn't just fairings that you could still attach stuff to on the outside. That would be nice. prograde burn. Never mind, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to warp around and reach the uh, transfer window. I could do it um, without being in the transfer window, but it would uh, be a little less fuel efficient. power quite a bit. I did do this right, did I not? I'm pretty sure I did it right. I did. Okay, let me get another encounter. Watch this and bring that down a little bit more. 40 kilometers is just fine. So uh, I am going to, uh, one second, I'm going to warp to the moon's uh, sphere of influence. Then I am going to burn retrograde. Oh wow, the moon's going to do a whole orbit before I come in and encounter. Oh, that's bugging me. Let's just clear all the debris. That's from my previous moon mission. Okay, so... There we go. I'm just gonna get an uh, encounter. Let's 
Let's aim retrograde. I'm not going to burn yet, but I'm just going to have it ready. Let's follow our target in. Now, if I did do something wrong with this um, mission that wasn't accurate historically, other than the third stage burn, please um, let me know down in the comments. Because I'm trying to make this as accurate as possible. As long as it's not something to do with, like, I did the fuel wrong. That's something I don't really care about. So I'm just going to circularize my orbit. Okay. I'm going to time warp down to my periapsis and lower my apoapsis by quite a bit. When it comes to encounters with landers, though, you will want to have a lower orbit. It just saves fuel and makes it easier. Especially if it's something that you need to refuel. So, my space station that I did, that's something that you would like to most likely have um, a low orbit with because of the... Uh, you need to refuel it when you go to most destinations. So you want to save as much fuel as possible on the ascent so you can transfer fuel into your station, if that makes sense at all. Let me just back this away. Now I'm going to switch to my lander. Turn on that main engine. I'm just going to point away from my spacecraft. And do some burns. Just like that. Now, let's burn retrograde, not prograde. So the reason that I'm making these orange is so that they're easy to spot when trying to dock with um, dock with each other. So I now am on the descent, and I will uh, continually fuel up my lower stage so that I don't run out of fuel. Now I'm going to time warp down to 10 kilometers, give or take just a little bit. And I'm going to kill off some of that extra horizontal speed. Just like that. So my landing site is going to be just below me. Now I'm going to start killing off my vertical speed. Once I reach about 80 meters per second, I'm going to go down to 5 kilometers where I can no longer time warp. Now as you can see there's a flat spot over to my right. I'm going to use my RCS thrusters to kind of maneuver over there, or I'm not. Okay. I need to remember which way um, my vehicle is facing when I uh, go to take off. Which way my... Uh, orbiter 
is facing just so that uh, if I get an orbit on the opposite direction and I try to get an encounter with that, they will blow up. Okay, now I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. I'm done using the map. I'm going to find a nice suitable landing spot. I'm going to lower my throttle down. Nope, 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 nope. Okay, now I'm going to lower my throttle down. To about 30%. As you can see right here, it's pretty flat. I'm just going to aim over there. Okay. 15% throttle. All right, kill off horizontal speed. And touchdown. We have a successful landing. Let's shut off that engine and refuel the ascent stage. I'm going to aim to my left just because that's the direction that I'm the orbit is facing but first just because well first of all let's set that as the target let's stay on the moon a few days that should be good now let this be right there Okay, now that we have lifted off the ground, or off the lander, I can kick it up to full throttle, or thrust, or whatever you want to call it, and just try and meet up with my uh, crew module, refuel the crew module, and make it back to earth in time for dinner so I'd like to get my orbits as close together as they possibly can The lunar ascent module needs to have a slightly higher orbit, considering the, uh, that, oh, it was behind us, now it is in front of us. So, I can just aim prograde here, and come into lunar orbit, which I have entered lunar orbit. Now, I want to reach my apoapsis, but I don't want such a high apoapsis, so let's bring that down just a little bit. There we go. 39.3 is about perfect. Now, I should be able to catch up with our uh, lunar transfer vehicle. fairly easily.
Perfect. Now, let's follow this. And catch up. Just like that. Let's see, can we see it? Here's where the orange comes in handy. I cannot see it. Let's get a little bit closer. I would like to get these as close as possible. Also, let's bring that all the way down. Um, there we go. Now we can see it. If you look in the bottom left corner, you'll see a hint of orange. And I'm going to use my RCS to maneuver over to that. I may also have to use my main engines to slow down on the approach. Once we get in close, I'm just going to burn a little bit. Let's do a small burn. So, it's still in the bottom left corner. I hope you can see it now. Um, if not, uh, that's not good. If you can't see it now, you should probably get your eyes checked. I'll time warp in a little bit. So the good thing about, um, I'm not sure what this is called, but um, the good thing about having a lander separate from an orbital module is you can not worry about uh, having to put a lot of fuel and have a really large lander. So uh, with direct ascent, you have to have a lot of fuel with uh, inside your lander module. but you don't need to know how to do docking. So that's what I did for my first moon mission, but um, you don't need to do that. It's unnecessary. And if there was money in this game, it would be a waste of money. So I'm just gonna back off using this, aim retrograde. And since this is now remote piloted, Realistically, I would have already transferred my crew. I'm going to kamikaze the moon. There we go. And just because, might as well. Let's put the throttle on. And... So this is going to hit the moon going over 300 meters, going over probably 500 meters per second. How fast can we hit the moon? That That's the new challenge for this video. Not even a Apollo style mission anymore. Just um, crash into the moon at your, as fast as possible. Crash into the moon at Earth's orbit velocity. Which, we're not quite there yet, but we're close. Hmm, the moon seems to be getting a little bit close. Goodbye. The speck of an explosion. So I will switch to this. Actually, I'll switch to this. As you can see, um, oh, wrong thing. As you can see, our lander is still here. We can't control it at all, but it's still here. It will remain there until I hit clear debris. Now, where was I? Ah, oh, yes. 
Let's make the approach back to Earth. I'm going to time warp. By this time, they've probably spent hundreds of days on the moon, my crew. But who cares? They're having fun, low gravity, microgravity. Now I'm just going to burn, once I turn my engine on, prograde, I'm going to exit the moon's orbit. And I'm going to enter Earth's orbit. Which I'm technically still in Earth's orbit because the, Earth, the moon is orbiting the Earth and I'm orbiting the moon. But I'm just going to get a circular orbit because why waste all this fuel the lunar ascent, ascent stage gave it a, gave us the fuel so that we could do this and then we'll perform a landing also I can destroy this So, this is almost the end of the video. I can unset the moon as the target. There we go. I can continue to burn retrograde. Now let's just enter Earth's atmosphere in a little bit. I would like to enter it as slow as I can. So we're still uh, not in the atmosphere. We're very close, but um, not quite there. I really wish that this game had re-entry heating, but unfortunately it does not. If it did, that would make it a lot more um, fun. So now we're just in the very top of the atmosphere. We're going to bring our periapsis down to where we can no longer time warp. Actually, where is the mission control at? I'd like to try and land there. Or let's save here and do something stupid, just because. Now can we shake off the um, lower stage? Come on, fall off. Well, it's obvious that's not going to work. I just prefer to get the lower stage as far away from the rocket as possible before entering the atmosphere to prevent any hazards from occurring. Um, if I turn my RCS on and just burn down, will it continue to... Oh. Unfortunately, it will not. It will leave us and we enter the atmosphere going very very quickly I'm gonna to wanna to aim retrograde but unfortunately the parachute will not let me and since I have no RCS on this I can't really do anything about it so in future videos I will probably do some Sea of Thieves, Kerbal Space Program, and uh, a few other games like Trailmakers and Subnautica. If you know how to use the 
audio while screen recording the Xbox? Please leave comments below because I have no idea. But, um, hope you enjoyed this video. And if you would like to see how the rocket was made, watch it to the end. And I'll just show you all the pieces in this rocket. If you need to learn how to dock, um, search Docking 101, or just, uh, that's basically it. So I'm just going to show what the rocket itself looks like. As you can see, um, it's going to take a little bit of a while to reach the ground. So I'm just going to go back to build. So the lower stage is composed of three Titan engines. It has an aerodynamic piece, two large tanks, two medium large tanks, and a separator that is the uh, next size down. The second stage composes of one Titan engine, one of the larger tanks from this here, or no, from um, this here part, and it has a separator and two other of the larger tanks. Then uh, the uh, third stage has a Hawk engine, a large tank, and a medium tank with a docking module on the top just to keep the lander stage in place. It has a few fairings, and you can make the lander any size you want, uh, you want just because I made mine like this. If you, you can make yours more accurate easily. And you still have a little bit of extra space to build. The lander stage, best engine to use for that is the broadsword um, engine. Just because it has a high thrust to weight ratio for what you're doing. And it's very fuel efficient. For the ascent stage, grasshopper engines because they're the smallest and they just kind of look the best. And then for the uh, returning module, more broadsword and a few fuel tanks. Make sure you add RCS thrusters. They come in handy when you're docking. And the parachute you can put anywhere. Just don't forget the parachute. So, um, this is basically all for the video. If you want to continue watching, go ahead. I'll just zoom out quite a bit. And there's the Earth. There's the Moon in the bottom right corner. Next to the off, where I'm toggling off and on, you can see the Moon. Now I'm going to zoom back in. And just sit back and watch.
Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please like and subscribe. Leave comments below for future videos. Bye.